This is a stream deck. This is a loop deck. Which one's better? What are you using it for? Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. I am Joe Finley, AKA Miss Cast Joe. And we're here today to talk about a bunch of decks. We've got the stream deck by Elgato and we have the loop deck and I've had the stream deck for a really long time. Uh, the loop deck, not as long. I just recently wrote a review for it. In fact, uh, had a lot of fun getting to play with it. And I always have a lot of fun with my stream deck. But the question is, which is the better device for you to use? And my conclusion was, it really depends on what you're going to use it for. So let's just talk about both machines for each use case and figure out which one's better for each. I guess it makes the most sense to go right off the bat and talk about streaming. OBS has its own integration uh, with the Stream Deck. You can create all sorts of controls uh, directly from the Stream Deck app. Just simple drag and drop actions, very user-friendly, very intuitive. Uh, the Loop Deck also has uh, what they call a profile for OBS Studio, uh, but it's a little bit different. A cool thing about the Loop Deck, uh, the second you go to an application, the dynamic mode in the Loop Deck software automatically switches your profile on the Loop Deck to be the controls for that application, which I think is awesome. I wish the Stream Deck would create a similar functionality uh, in their software. It can be turned on and off on the Loop Deck. I would say that the same thing would need to be done with the Stream Deck. So you see right off the bat, the Stream Deck software is really simple. Uh, you can select actions from anything over here. So right off the bat, here's your OBS studio. You can select a scene, you could select mixer audio, record and stream, you can select an individual source. And it's just as simple as drag it in, find your collection, find which scene you want, find which source you want. And you also have the simplicity of the multi-action. So if you just right click on the empty square here, you can create a multi-action go into it and then just start dragging all sorts of things in. So you can switch to a scene, then you can turn on a source, then you can turn on a microphone, then what else do you want to do? You could create a small delay and then you could turn on another source. And you can just go and go and go all, you, all day long if you'd like. You can see all the other integrations they have here down the side as well as you can go into more actions and there's all sorts of things that you can download and add directly to your stream deck also a very interesting difference between the two youtube integration so you can see you can get a youtube chat message here you can also if you go back in here like search There's more stuff. I can get channel statistics. I could get a player ticker. Uh, there's a YouTube music desktop connect. Uh, that is something that doesn't exist in the loop deck. You can work around certain things, but you just can't get these types of integrations from the loop deck. So let's look at the loop deck software. There's a lot to look at right off the bat. You've got this whole side over here, which is essentially kind of the map of what's here. You can see your different workspaces, which are these different green buttons down here. I'm on the stream button right now, but I can click. This is the studio button, and you can see that the screen changes with all the different information. Uh, home it brings you back to everything. And what, have, what else have you? There's your Spotify controls and your Twitch controls. That is the built-in setup that Loop Deck has uh, for OBS. If you go up here, you can see that the application is OBS Studio. And if we open it up, we can see all of the things that Loop Deck covers. So anything that has the little Loop Deck symbol here is actually something that it came built with. So you can see Windows, you can see the Alberton, uh, pretty much all the Adobe stuff is in there After Effects, Lightroom, uh, um, what else? Audition, uh, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, they're all in here. You can also download custom profiles for other programs like DaVinci Resolve, GarageBand, Audacity, pretty much any editing software that you can think of. But right now, as far as streaming software, 
is concerned. Uh, OBS Studio and Streamlabs are the only ones that are really your options. You can't get on XSplit if you use that, or uh, Twitch Studio, or anything of those sorts. You can build your own profiles for other programs, any program that's on your computer, in fact, but we're gonna save that for another video, I think, because that's a, a lot. If I come over here and I open up my OBS Studio, so you can see press actions here, down here you see rotation adjustments. So these are for things that uh, pertain to the dials, and then these are pertaining to the things that have to do with the buttons. So if I go into the OBS Studio things, you can actually see these are all of the scenes for my current OBS uh, scene collection that I'm using. Uh, I produce a podcast, a video podcast called Dueling Decades, so that's where I have all that stuff. So within each individual folder, are all the individual sources that are on that so that I can assign one of these sources just by dragging it into a spot and that will turn it on or turn it off. Uh, also, if I come down again, like I said, to the rotation, you'll see it's mostly audio. Uh, there are some streaming commands, some transitions and transition durations. Uh, again, general audio, so that's just turning on and off an audio device. You can take what they have built in and you can customize it any way you want. You're not stuck with what they give you, which is good. I would use it as it's set up at first, see what's missing for you and see what's there that you're not going to use and then slowly but surely tweak it until you have it just the way you want it. Uh, for example, I don't stream on Twitch. I stream on YouTube. So uh, you can just uh, subscribe to me so you find out when I'm streaming and stuff like that. And also I stream on my other channel, Miscast Commentary, when we do our uh, video podcasts. So go check it out there. But anyways, like I said, I don't use Twitch, so all of this stuff is of no use to me. So I can get rid of this entire workspace if I want to. And I can do that just by coming over here clicking on the gear and just clicking as delete. Bit of a bummer that there's nothing for YouTube here. I would like very much for them to fix that, but you know, it's software. These things can happen. So glancing at the two pieces of software, I give the streaming edge to the stream deck, not because there's things that the loop deck can't do, but just how easy it is to do on the stream deck. It's very straightforward. There's a lot less stuff to stare at. So if I am a first timer trying to figure out how to use one of these devices, I'm going to go to the stream deck. Now let's talk about editing. This is where things start to lean more towards the loop deck. Like I said before, this thing has profiles for pretty much every piece of editing software, photo, video, audio, all of the above. For some reason, not Affinity Photo though. Affinity Designer? Yes. Affinity Photo? No. Weird. So for example, if I go into my Affinity Designer, you can see my cool little controls here. And under each thing, so I'm going to edit one. It takes you to your editing workspace and you can see all sorts of great controls right in here. I have tweaked some of these just for my own needs, but quick mark in, mark out. Basically a lot of the hot keys that are sitting on your keyboard. It's just easier to have them all at a quick glance. And it's very cool to be able to, if you go back and we see what's on the controls here, I have my controls for, for playing, reversing and stopping content. I can actually zoom my timeline in and out. Uh, I can go to my different markers just by dialing. I can add a marker just by clicking in the dial. Uh, you can see changing different editing types, select a click, uh, getting your doing the razor edit, uh, moving individual frames just by scrolling. Uh, wonderful, wonderful pieces of software. And if I go into what edit two, you can see so many different things. So the cinema viewer, I can bring up scopes. I can go into my deliverer stuff. I can go into fusion and make uh, adjustments from there. It's a wonderful profile. And this is where the loop deck becomes a big deal, especially these dials make all the difference in the world when editing. I, I literally pushed my again i've only had this for a few days and i literally pushed my keyboard out of the way and i just have that sitting in front of me with my mouse and i get everything done and a lot faster 
So you're actually going to get these videos now because I can do that stuff with this. But with the Stream Deck, because you don't have things like the dials and that, you don't have as much dynamic control over the editing process as I do with the Loop Deck. Uh, it's still very good. You can program all your hotkeys and all that stuff in. Uh, you can program in your JKL for play and stop and reverse. So, I mean, there's a lot you can do with it still. Uh, especially if you don't want to have to uh, navigate your keyboard, or if you're just bad at remembering all the hotkeys. You know what you need, but you just can't remember, oh, is it, uh, what do I hit? If Is it S or is it Alt this or whatever? You can go and learn what all those are and go, ooh, I'd really like that, and then program that as a hotkey on your Stream Deck. So it's great for that still, and could be a lot more useful than your keyboard but the loop deck just has the edge because of those dials now i did say that affinity photo doesn't have a downloadable profile but i did make my own for this because i wanted to see how easy it was to do it and i wanted to see what the photo controls were like and that's the program i use so we open that up and here's what i see so i've created again all of the things on the dials uh, i can simply turn a knob here and change the brush size. I can turn this knob and change my text size. I can zoom in and out of the image here. I can undo and redo, which is just game changer, just with a dial. Uh, and then you see I just have some simple resize commands and I can open up my crop tool or move tool, uh, cut, paste, export, things like that. Uh, very simple command and I'm still tweaking it as I go, but I think it's a really good start. And I think that it's something that uh, Loop Deck should really look into, seeing as they already do a profile for Affinity Designer. Just a thought. And again, with the Stream Deck, again, all your hotkeys and all these different things, uh, very easy. To program in here but again just those little things with the dial are such game changers for that type of editing i have to give the edge to the loop deck again and a lot of these tools also obviously apply to uh, audio editing uh, the ability to shuttle through your audio timelines uh quick buttons for different types of edits all that sort of stuff the loop deck just sits above the stream deck in that uh, aspect too so if the Loop Deck beats out the Stream Deck so many times in so many different ways on so many different programs, why do I love the Stream Deck so much? It's just so bloody simple. So just to look at the two pieces of software side by side, it's just so much more intuitive and so fast to create anything that you want. It's integrations with things like YouTube, uh, Twitter, as I have up here, uh, or even a lot of hardware. You can control things like your own Philips Hue lights. You can control voice mod stuff. You can control uh, different tools. Like I have a stream counter that I use because I use it for points for the game we do in Dueling Decades, uh, which I can show you actually really quickly. So I just hit a button and the numbers change and they change on their screen that way as well. It's wonderful. For Twitch users, the Twitch integration is probably a lot deeper uh, than what's in the loop deck. So just the simplicity of the device, you know, makes it such a winning piece of equipment for me. But the loop deck has its place. But cost is something worth considering. Uh, the loop deck live costs $269 US right now. Uh, whereas the stream deck, a simpler product, has a simpler price, it's $199 US, and you can get the mini version, which is just six buttons instead of the 15 that I have for 109 US. Uh, you can also get the XL, which then you're getting crazy in the price, uh, but it's a lot more expensive, but again, you're looking at 32 buttons instead of 15. And if you don't even want to go that expensive, you can download the Stream Deck app right on your phone, and that's $2.99 a month for full functionality, uh, just like my Stream Deck here. Something else worth comparing on the two machines is the build. Uh, both are built solid. The Loop Deck feels a bit more solid. It's got a metal design, and I really like, even though it's very simple, the stand on this, the way it locks in, never comes off. The stand for the Stream Deck is just this 
flimsy little thing. Nice because it can fold up flat and go away if you don't want to use it. But it falls down from time to time. It's not uh, the best little piece. If, if you get either of the other two stream decks, you get a better stand. But, you know, that's a small, that's a small thing. Uh, I do really enjoy the buttons on the stream deck. Uh, so much more. I like to be able to click down on something. Uh, the buttons on the loop deck actually aren't buttons. Uh, the whole thing is actually a touch screen. You can swipe left and swipe right on it to navigate your different uh, pages and all that sort of stuff. But uh, you, but they're not buttons. They just put a little plastic around it, so you have that kind of tactile feel, like you're touching different areas of the machine. One thing that they did add, which was kind of nice though, is the haptic feedback, just giving you a little confirmation that you've hit it and that it's the command is going. I would like the haptic feedback to be a little bit less, maybe just a, one of those little teeny little things like, you know, when you're typing on your phone or something like that, just because that gets a little loud when you're not using a dynamic mic or something like that. Nothing major, but just something worth noting. So the bottom line is who needs the stream deck and who needs the loop deck? I recommend that somebody has one of them, honestly, uh, if you're going to do any kind of content creation. I think that they're both wonderful tools and they're better than other things that are on the market, different uh, macro hardware and things like that. It's all about use case. My suggestion is that if you're a streamer, you stick with the Stream Deck. If you make a wide variety of content and you're making a little bit of money doing it, then maybe you can start to look at a loop deck because again it's a higher price point uh i got mine for free so that's why i have it otherwise i wouldn't have purchased it because this isn't a monetized channel yet so i you know kind of pinch the pennies here and there i love gear i have all sorts of it but you know you gotta choose when to save your money from time to time at least that's what i've been told but if you are making a lot of different types of content, like I said, if you're, you know, working on making your thumbnails, if you're working on uh, editing videos to post to YouTube, if you're doing all those things, the Loop Deck is definitely worth a serious look. Okay, so that's it for this one, guys. Uh, if I've missed anything or if there's anything you want to add, uh, please put it in the comments down below. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this and learned something from me uh, and you want to see more of me in the future, either streaming or with these videos. Let's smash those buttons, baby. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Make sure to check the links down below for all the different ways to find me, as well as links to the two devices that we have here today. So until next time, get to work. I can't wait to see what you guys make. Yeah, see, we, that's the other thing is we get ahead of ourselves with the movies. So we like connecting this moment mentally to what the movie we're about to do never seems to make sense to us because it's always yeah, something no, it does, yeah, I don't know. I, I always throw you off because I'm like, oh, this one's a lark. It's a nice coming of age film. And you're like, it's Canada. Yeah, like, Holocaust. what? Like, yeah, like, what? <laughs>